Shout out, uh, Brother Tempo, because, yeah, we just said with some real stuff. Um, it's not very often that we come together as artists and, you know, underneath that, ministers, ministers who minister through the arts, through music, through rap, through hip hop, to actually come to the place where we're not just talking about, oh, well, yeah, God is using me, um, I got this gift, I use it for God, I spit bars and then talk about, oh yeah, got this project coming up, that project coming up, and uh, oh yeah, and the, all the accolades and stuff. Um, nothing wrong with them in and of themselves, but it all really comes down to the motive. I mean, what's the heart? I mean, like, what, what kind of spirit are you operating under, even in the name um, of Christian rap? Like, what are you using this for? Um, it's good, I mean, it's, it's better than all the, like the, the chances, the um, Stormzy's, the, the little Wayne's out there. But still, what is the motive? Um, and for me, that is actually a big deal. And then the lifestyle. Um, I find that because I go online, I read articles on like Rapzilla, Jam the Hype, New H2O, and um, even Kingdom Culture mixtape, shout out to Charles. Uh, and what makes me gravitate to certain artists like new people to listen to or keep listening to them is, you know, when I can get to hear their heart behind their music, you know, what keeps them, what has led them to do what they're doing currently, you know, their own vision for the scene where it's going. And if they have a heart of ministry, if they have that, that missionary heart, um, because once I actually know that, then you know I can actually engage with their music more. Because what they're saying, you know, is, is something similar to like you know just what I want God to put in me, and something that I want to maintain in my own life, which is you know on this mic, off this mic. Yeah, I'm sharing the gospel with people, not to boast, but I'm sharing the gospel with people. You know that is the mandate. Uh, what did Jesus say at the end of the gospels? Uh, particularly in Matthew 28, you know, go out there and, you know, preach the gospel to every living creature, to every nation, uh, to preach. Like, this is just one way to preach. Um, I also remember um, seeing, like, a very old Facebook status when uh, Gospel Cypher, um, that's Armour and Brandon, that was their thing before, like, I don't know where they're at right now, but I remember one status saying, Yes, we are grateful that you do gospel rap, but let that not be the only way you share the gospel. So really, my encouragement is don't let rap be the only way that you share the gospel. Continue using that as one means, but that need not be the only means. Um, you know, just how willing are we to, you know, get on the street and actually have, uh, you know, 10 conversations with people and not having to rhyme. I mean, obviously, if the occasion comes up, use it, but it's just one avenue. And I think that alone will actually say a lot about our heart, like, you know, the, the person, like, the heart behind the music. In fact, I think, you know, just when you actually just stay faithful and just, you know, live life, just let God say, reveal whatever he needs to, I mean, that just only makes our music, whatever lyrics we can come up with, all the more powerful. Um, one of my um, favorite scriptures, um, I'll just turn to it really quickly, is Philippians, Philippians 4, 8. I don't want to paraphrase it, so that's why I'm turning to it physically. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. It's all about renewing the mind. It all starts here, it all starts here. So for me, what I've come to um, in my walk with God right now, which I can share with you, because you know, I believe um, you know, if we're gonna be talking about unity as uh, rap ministers, then yeah, we should be able to get real. I've been saying to some of the guys just about um, just my recent um, experiences in you know changing churches just due to 
you know, a lot of revelations, but things I've had to learn the hard way about, you know, just putting too much, you know, trust and like, you know, somewhat idolatry in church leadership, um, having that automatic bias when problems arise and just kind of out of like, you know, apathy, being passive and just thinking, well, okay, this other person, um, as close as they are to me, or they're just looking at things the wrong way. Um, yeah, just, just not really fairly responding to both parties and then uh, just through putting my trust in God and like God just revealing things to me in uh, dreams just um, about uh, individuals and just noticing the paradigm shift in their own attitude towards me, especially when I began to speak up. Um, so, uh, so, so, one, so one close friend uh, just spoke to me about just feeling unwelcome. You know, maybe it's just misunderstanding. Uh, but then when I actually began to pay attention, um, I actually had a dream that, um, because I was actually quite close friends with my um, former pastors, uh, two youngest daughters, and I had a dream that one of them was actually holding on to me like her uh, from the back. And then, you know, I just, just broke free from her. And then since then, um, she, well, I didn't really try to make any effort to speak to that. Well, I didn't really try not to speak to her either. I was just, you know, just going around, just greeting everybody like I usually do. But, you know, there was just this distance that just became very apparent, it became very clear. Um, and then, yeah, just, just actually towards, um, you know, that friend of mine, another close friend of mine, um, just noticing that there's, there's some kind of, actually there's some kind of like click thing going on which I actually didn't want to be a part of and I tried to address it in the most, uh, you know, humble, like, unbiased way I possibly could. But then when it came to, like, just addressing those things and just piecing things together, it was just like, there was like a whole lot of, um, uh, like, defense, like, self-justification. Um, there was, like, toleration for, you know, just uh, trying to establish relationships in a very lustful way. And because I had, like, I basically like grew up in that church, like grow up from being a spiritual baby, that is. And, you know, that just really sowed a lot of seeds um, of lust within myself that wasn't adequately dealt with. Um, just like seeds from like growing up and just seeing, um, experiencing certain things, um, you know, in, 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 a, in a much more like, like kind of like curious, like not necessarily um, sexual, but just in a Kind of like in, in a perverse kind of like, yeah, like in a, in a very perverse, playful, like, uh, like, like flirtatious way. Um, and just like being um, in a place where, you know, where relationships are just so um, kind, of, kind of like pushed upon in a way that, okay, you think you like someone, oh, okay, just go for it. Like, okay, never mind so much. Like there's an emphasis on is this the right one, but the way that you kind of go about Finding that out is kind of like, oh, oh, just, just go for whoever. If it doesn't work out, okay, just move on. A bit passive in that way. So when I just came to um, revealing that, listen, like, there's just this sister that, okay, like, we're just getting to know, like, you know, on our own accord, but, you know, just her attention towards me just isn't right. Like, God showed me that. Um, she, rather, she was just tolerated. The spirit behind her was tolerated. And because of that, and a whole bunch of other things I had to leave. Um, I actually left that church. Uh, it's been about three months now. And even after leaving, and even after cutting ties with certain individuals, you know, I just found that, you know, just even the way that I just interacted with sisters, it just wasn't really the healthiest, um, the, the best way. And, you know, I just really, yeah, it, it, it badly affected um, some of my, um, relationships, some of my uh, friendships, um, like my close friendship circle. Um, so, yeah, it was just really like, a, it, so it had been a, a time of just really reflecting, just renewing, um, and just really readdressing, okay, God, like, you know, just, just how do I actually just uh, react with, um, interact with sisters? Like, like, how do I get more intentional about, okay, I'm not, you know, might as well try to be King Henry VIII back here. Like, we can't like do polygamy. Like, no, 
and how many wives he had or, or, or stuff like that. But yeah, it's just renewal of the mind and just, you know, just interacting with sisters and then being more intentional about, okay, uh, how do I um, just maintain like just a heart of being genuine, um, just for people around me who, you know, God, God's calling all of us to, to do so many things, amazing things, in the, the measure of capacity, going to the measure of grace that God gives us. And it really takes renewal of the mind and meditate on the right things to, you know, just really fight and get to that place where it's just like, yeah, you know, I, I, care, I care about my brothers, I care about my sisters. And, you know, if I go to take a step back, maybe wait a little bit just so, you know, they can have their time to shine. Because at the end of the day, they're not shining for themselves, they're shining for Christ. Um, and that will be the same standard with me. So it's just really been, yeah, readdressing the foundations. And I think, you know, we will just go through that season, hopefully uh, not necessarily the hard way if we keep listening, just go through that season where we just always gotta take um, a stop to just really remind ourselves, you know, why are we truly in this thing? Is it for Christ or is it just really for ourselves? And I think taking it back to the music, uh, you know, anything that we do, you know, music, um, just straight up evangelism, you know, uh, moving in the pathetic, uh, or, yeah, pastoring a church. Yeah, that, that background check in the secret place um, is, is always going to be required. And, um, yeah, by your fruits you shall know them. So, yeah, by my fruits you will know me as well. So, Amen. Be encouraged to, you know, renew your mind and all of that. And then make great music from that place of authenticity and realness. God bless. Cool. You guys, we've got hands together. Aaron, please.